This is Contractor Sense with Ruth King. Welcome to Contractor Sense. Here you discover ideas, tactics, news, and information that matters to your contracting business and you. I'm your host, Ruth King. This episode is sponsored by HVAC Trustbooks. Go to HVACTrustbooks.com to discover how this tool can help you close more sales. Thank you for joining us. Here is how we will help your business and you today. My wish for you is that you have the best summer ever in terms of revenue and profitability. For the next sessions, you'll get tips and ideas that will help you do just that. I've divided my tips for you into general business strategy, pricing, marketing, inventory, sales, and cash. Today, I talk about general business strategy and pricing ideas. In future podcasts, I'll talk about the other areas to pay attention to so that you have the best summer ever. So let's begin. And I want to begin with a story. This is the story of a contractor who ended up taking my pricing class at the end of the summer. He had had a phenomenal summer in terms of cash flow, and he was feeling really, really good. Then at the end of the summer, he had to pay all of his bills, and he had almost no cash left to help him go through the slower winter months. I got an email from him saying, you know, I had a really good summer with respect to cash, but now I've learned that I wasn't profitable. I had a lot of cash, but not a lot of profits. My hope for you over the next several podcasts is that you take these ideas so that you have a great summer in terms of cash flow and in terms of profit. So, My first thing is business strategy overall. And when I look at business strategy, I look at it in terms of what do we really have to do to maximize our businesses and maximize our profitability? And that, in a word, is maintenance. And you might think I'm absolutely insane because why aren't we doing service and why aren't we doing replacements and why aren't, you know, why are we worried about maintenance? Well, maintenance gives you the base. A growing maintenance base means a growing service base and a growing replacement base. The more maintenance you have, the more maintenance clients you have, the better you will have with respect to replacements, with respect to service work. And this summer, it's going to sound absolutely insane, but this summer is the time to grow your maintenance base. It's the time to advertise, which we'll talk about in the session on marketing, because people need you. I know this is totally counterintuitive because I don't need the extra work. I mean, I have the phone ringing off the hook, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm so busy as it is. Why should I invest in marketing during the summer? It's probably going through all of your minds right now. Well, if you invest in the times of the year where people don't need you and they're not paying attention, you've basically wasted your marketing funds. And we're going to talk about more through that as we get through the marketing sessions on how to have a great and the best summer ever. So I'm going to table that particular discussion for the podcast, which is coming in the next few weeks. Stay tuned for that one. All right, so we start with maintenance because maintenance gives us everything else. And what I mean by that is whether you're residential or commercially oriented, for every maintenance dollar you have in residential, you should get somewhere between $1 and $2 in service or replacement work in residential. For every maintenance dollar you have in commercial, you should get somewhere between $2 and $4 in service work and project work. So you can see the more revenue dollars you have in maintenance, the more service and project work that you have. In addition, from from a residential standpoint, the more maintenance clients you have, the more replacements you'll have. On average, for most of the country, for every... 100 maintenance agreements, you'll replace somewhere between 8 and 10 systems a year. So it's about an 8 to 10% replacement rate. Now, for those of you who are on the Gulf Coast of Florida and who are in areas where we have a lot of sea and salt and fun things that absolutely corrode units, it's actually higher simply because you replace units a lot quicker than those of us in Atlanta or those of us who are further north and don't have the horrendous or opportunity, whichever way you want to look at it, of having a, for all intents and purposes, an atmosphere that is full of salt water, which kills air conditioning units. Anyway, so from a maintenance perspective, for every dollar in maintenance, you'll get somewhere between $1 for residential to $4 for commercial in either service or replacement work. And so that's a really good rule of thumb that you can use. 
So the more maintenance agreement clients that you can enroll this summer, the better off you'll be in other times of the year. Now, many maintenance agreement clients say, well, I'll just do this because it's going to save me money on my service ticket this year and I won't worry about it next year. The key to keeping your maintenance agreement clients is talking to them throughout the year. And that will be a subject of another podcast in the future. So maintenance gives you service, gives you replacement. And quite frankly, right now with the actual business analysis that I'm doing for valuations, the more maintenance agreement clients you have, the more business, the more, excuse me, the more your business will be worth when you go to sell it or pass it along to the next generation. Doesn't matter. Either way, more maintenance, more revenue, more predictable revenue means a better selling price and better value for your business in future years to come. Now your techs don't need to know that. They think of it as work for them to do in slower times a year, which is fine. Let them think that way. The customers, on the other hand, have a situation where if they keep their systems maintained, even if they have newer systems, they will save money on their utility bills. I've proven it. If you want a copy of the video that shows it, just send me an email and my email address will be at the end of this podcast. So business strategy is just this. Maintenance first. The more maintenance clients you have, the more service you will do and the more replacement work that you will have. And that's strategy, all right? So when we get back from break, we're going to talk about pricing strategy. We'll be right back. Thanks for listening to Contractor Sense. I've seen my clients' salespeople struggle when a customer asks why they should use your company rather than the competition when your price is higher and you both are proposing the same equipment. I've seen technicians struggle when customers ask them whether they should replace an 18-year-old air conditioner. And most salespeople and technicians never ask the one question that most customers are concerned about, yet never ask. Can I trust you? I found a tool that gives your salespeople and technicians the ammunition to answer this question and more. And the tool works. How do I know? 68% of my clients are using it to increase sales and referrals. What is it? A trust book with your name on it as the author. More details are at HVACTrustBooks.com. Warning, there is only one contractor per area that can get these great books. Some areas are already taken. They've gone to my clients. If you want your area and want to have a tool for your salespeople and technicians to increase referrals and sales, then go to HVACTrustBooks.com now and reserve your area. I've seen my clients' salespeople struggle when a customer asks why they should use your company rather than the competition when your price is higher and you both are proposing the same equipment. I've seen technicians struggle when customers ask them whether they should replace an 18-year-old air conditioner. And most salespeople and technicians never ask the one question that most customers are concerned about, yet never ask. Can I trust you? I found a tool that gives your salespeople and technicians the ammunition to answer this question and more. And the tool works. How do I know? 68% of my clients are using it to increase sales and referrals. What is it? A trust book with your name on it as the author. More details are at HVACTrustBooks.com. Warning, there is only one contractor per area that can get these great books. Some areas are already taken. They've gone to my clients. If you want your area and want to have a tool for your salespeople and technicians to increase referrals and sales, then go to HVACTrustBooks.com now and reserve your area. Welcome back to Contractor Sense. Let's start talking about pricing strategy. My pricing strategy is very different from the majority of contractors who've gone to classes. And quite frankly, back in the early 90s, I used to teach the divide by one minus the growth margin method of pricing too. Until somewhere around, I'd say 2003, 2004, somewhere around there, I started looking at the contractors who I was working with, and most of them had about the same gross margins. Some of them were doing really, really well, and some of them weren't. So I'm going, you know, what's going on here? Something doesn't make sense. And then I got a blinding flash of the obvious, you know, like this thunderbolt just hits me in the eyes. It's not only the gross margin that matters, it's the amount of overhead that we have to attach to each job that also matters. And overhead is based on the number of productive hours, i.e. billable hours. So I stopped, absolutely stopped teaching pricing by dividing by the one minus the gross margin method. I mean, I, I agree, I used to teach it. 
And now I'm introducing this very new way of pricing. You know, there had been the gross profit per man day way, but they still didn't do overhead calculations. There had been dual overhead methods, which to the most part came pretty close, but nobody had really looked at it from a perspective of how much do I want to make for every billable hour that we have? And that's really the answer because the more that you are efficient with your billable hours and the more billable hours you have, the more profits you should have with respect to dollars. And let me also say that percentages don't matter. I can show you two companies, each you know, who generated a 10% net profit, one who had a net profit per hour per billable hour of $10 and one who had a net profit per hour of $50. Which would you rather be? I hope it's the $50. You're much more efficient at that point. But both of them had the 10% net profit. So you can't take a percentage to the bank, and the percentages really and truly don't matter. The only thing that really matters is those dollars that you can take to the bank. What did you earn for every net, for every billable hour with respect to net profit? All right, so that's how I price. And you're going to go, okay, you're going to, most of you who are not pricing this way are going to be exactly like the contractors in my group who I started working with. However, they trusted me because I've helped them over the years and they actually started doing it. And guess what? They started being more profitable. They started being more efficient because everybody's tracking billable hours and seeing how, effi how efficient they are and seeing what's happening with respect to billable versus non-billable hours. And as a result of it, guess what happens to profitability? It goes up. So my plead to you, and I want you to start really looking at how much you are bringing in for every billable hour. And that's how you start pricing. And the summer is kind of easy, simply because we have a lot of billable hours. And I have some contractors I work with who decide that they want a net profit per hour of, you know, let's say $100 when it's in the slow season. But when it's busy, they may raise that to two or $300 net profit per hour. In a previous podcast, I introduced you to Tim Shellert, who is one of the contractors who I introduced to net profit per hour. And if you go back into the archives, you can listen to his story about how his views and how his thoughts changed about what reality is with respect to a good net profit per hour. So where we're gonna go with this pricing strategy is we're gonna say, what net profit per hour do we wanna earn? Or what net profit per hour do you wanna earn? It's not a we, because I can't tell you how much to make on the bottom line. You're the only one as the owners of your companies who can answer that question. Even your managers can't answer it. You tell your managers what you want for net profit per hour, and then they work backwards. And here's what I mean. If we take our normal profit and loss statement, we start with sales and subtract our cost of sales to get us a gross profit and subtract out our overhead to get our net profit. And it's just a very basic P&L formula that we've all talked about, you know, ad nauseum, so to speak. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the bottom instead of starting on the top. We're gonna to say, okay, how much do I really wanna earn per billable hour? And if it's 50 bucks, if it's 20 bucks, if it's 100 bucks, it doesn't matter. It's what you want, it's your business, you write the checks, your name's on the door, the buck stops with you. So for all intents and purposes, decide what you want for net profit per hour. It doesn't matter, you're the, you're the boss in the situation. Then what you do is you add to it your overhead cost per hour. And your overhead cost per hour is just simply your total overhead divided by your billable hours. And what does that mean? So let's take, it's now June, so let's take the first five months of the year and let's look at the total overhead costs we had for the first five months of the year and the total number of billable hours. Not total hours, not total payroll hours, just billable hours. Or if you wanna do it like for last year, you can look at last year's year-end P&Ls and you look at your total overhead for last year and divide it by your total, bill, total billable hours for last year, and that will give you an overhead cost per hour. If it's over $40 per hour, we need to talk. It should not be higher than $40 per hour. You're not being efficient, something's going on, and we really and truly need to have a conversation about it. The only caveat to that is if you're a smaller company with only a few technicians and a few crews or one tech and a couple of crews, then you might be over $40 per hour. 
until you grow a little bit. All right, so we start with the net profit per hour you want to earn. We add to it your overhead cost per hour. And then we have your gross profit per hour. You add your direct costs, and that will give you your selling price or the price that you should be selling at. So if it's calculating your service call per hour, that's it because we only have one hour that we're considering. But the other thing that you have to consider if you're doing that is that is assuming that you have 100% billable hours. So if you only have probably 60 or 70% billable hours, you have to divide whatever number you come up with by 0.7. If it's 30%, that's unbillable, and that will give you what your selling um, hourly rate should be. If you're pricing out a replacement job or a project job, you take whatever your gross profit per hour is times the number of billable hours you expect and then add your direct cost to get the selling price to the customer. So that's how I suggest that you price. And it's summer, so you have a lot of people who are looking at you and saying, okay, when can you get it in rather than how much? So it's a perfect time of year to actually experiment with your pricing. If you've never done this before, why don't you just add $25 per hour? And I'm not saying 25, but I mean, just take a number, add $25 an hour to your service rates and see what happens. Um, I'll bet you get the same number of customers who are actually calling you on the phone and who are actually doing work with your company. So if you raised it $25 per hour, then guess what? If you did a thousand service tickets this summer, that's an extra $25,000 into your bottom line just simply by raising your rates $25 per hour. So think about it. Pricing strategy based on the net profit per hour, how much do you actually want to earn for every hour, and then go backwards. Okay? So this is what I wanted to cover in this particular podcast. We look at maintenance agreements for being the most important thing that you do. And then when you consider your pricing, consider pricing by net profit per hour. So thank you for joining us. Choose one thing that you discovered and implement it in your business. These ideas, these tactics, and these strategies help you make more money, have more free time, and give back. If you liked today's program, spread the word, and please review this podcast on any device you're listening to it on. Help a fellow contractor make more money, too. For comments or questions, or if you would like some information about net profit per hour or anything that I talked about in this podcast, Call me at 770-729-0258 or send me an email, ruthking at hvacchannel.tv. Thanks for listening. Have a great and profitable day.